Now people sometimes say to me, Alan, we understand what you're saying, but where's the evidence? Where's the evidence that the continued use of mixed medieval units and metric units is actually dragging down the education of our children, particularly in math, science and technology? Now that's a very good question and it deserves a proper considered answer. But it also begs the question, how would you test such a hypothesis? Now the normal way of doing this, of course, is to have two equally matched groups, matched as far as possible in every relevant way. And then you would expose one group entirely to mixed units, mixed medieval and metric units for as long as possible, many years. The other group would only be exposed to metric units. And then after some considerable time, you would compare the two and see if there were any real difference in their learning. Well, by an amazing coincidence, quite unwittingly, this very experiment has been carried out over the last 40 odd years. Here in the UK, we have millions of children who have gone through the education system exposed to this great mixture of medieval and metric units, while in other countries, and I'm going to use just the Western European countries because they're more economically matched with our own, if we take the Western European countries, those children have been exposed almost entirely to metric units in all that time. Now, when we look at the international comparisons, and there have been quite a few over the years, in fact the latest one that came out from the, uh, the PISA report was just this month, March 2014. And virtually all of these reports show that our children don't do as well as they should do. Okay, I'm not saying they're right at the very bottom, but they're not at the level that they ought to be for a country of our development. Now, you may say, well, let's have a look. Are these groups equally matched? Well, I've never come across any evidence that suggests, for example, that children in the UK have, on average, lower IQs than children in the Western uh, European countries. I've never come across any evidence that suggests our children have lower innate genetic mathematical ability than children in the Western European countries. So, in every way possible, they are equally matched. Our school systems are not that different. In many European countries, children go to primary schools, they have one teacher for most subjects, including mathematics, and then they start having the specialist teachers when they get to the secondary schools. That's exactly what we do here, isn't it? And this experiment, remember, has very large sample size. Statisticians would be, oh, would be over the moon. Millions of children in one group and millions of children in the other. It's a wonderful, it's a statistician's delight. And yet, at the end of all of this, we are still not as good as we should be compared with other Western European countries. Now, it's very difficult to point to any other aspect of our system that could cause this, because we've had so many changes, so many developments. For instance, we had in the 60s something called New Maths. We've had the Scottish Maths Project. We've had the introduction of GCSEs. We've had Ofsted inspections for getting over 20 years. Goodness me, they're even inspecting play schools these days. We've had billions of pounds spent on our education system. Millions of those spent on curriculum development. We've had the national curriculum. We've had the numeracy strategy. We have some of the best computer facilities in the world right here in our schools. And along with that, we have some of the best software. And now, of course, for the last 12, 13 years, whatever, we've had access to the internet, a vast resource of material, videos, past exam papers to trial, and so on. Huge resource. And yet, our children are still not as good as they should be. Now, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Sherlock Holmes, and one of his maxims was something along the lines of, when you have excluded all other possibilities, whatever remains, no matter how unlikely it may seem, must be the truth. And it seems to me that when we have excluded all these other differences, 
all the developments and so on that have taken place, the one thing that has been consistent throughout that 40 odd years is the fact that our children have been exposed to this mishmash of medieval and metric units, while those in the other Western European countries, those millions of children, have had only metric units. Now, when you talk to children, you get a feel for this, you know. And being the anorak sort of person I am, I've, I've done this lots of times. You can ask young children, those at school, primary schools, who have actually weighed themselves and measured their heights at school, and when you ask them how much they weigh, they will give you that in kilograms. And when you ask them how tall they are, they will give it to you in centimetres. When you ask adults the same question, by and large, there are some people who are getting more modern, but by and large, you get their weights in stones and pounds, and they will give you their height in feet and inches. Now, what's interesting here is there is a gap between these two age groups. And I would say from my experience, it's somewhere between around 12 years old to say 18 or 20. And when you ask them these questions, they don't want to answer. If you ask them what their weight is, all you get is silence. Now, when you dig a bit deeper, what you find is the reason they don't want to answer quite often is because they don't know which set of units to give you the answer in. In fact, some of them have given up completely and don't even weigh themselves or measure their heights. Our children are totally confused. Now I have conducted these experiments myself many times. Whenever I go abroad and I see a group of children, perhaps a, a class out with a teacher or children at a party or a family group or whatever, if I have the opportunity I'll ask if it's okay to ask the children these questions and when I ask them how much they weigh and how tall they are, there is no hesitation. They give their answer for their weight in kilograms and they give their heights in metres or centimetres. They'll say something like, oh, I'm 138. It just rolls off the tongue. Our children do not do that. Now, this may seem a trivial thing, but actually it's fundamental because in this country we need qualified people in math, science and technology for a whole range of jobs. And if our children cannot even answer simple questions in metric units like how much they weigh and how tall they are, what chance are they of understanding more advanced concepts such as speed, acceleration, force, energy, power, even something like land area? When you ask people in this country, how big is an acre? Nobody knows. They do not know how big an acre is. And when you ask people how many acres do you think there are in a square mile, about 90% of the population will say somewhere between 2 and 10. When the real answer is 640. Why do we continue to use these units that nobody understands? Why are we not using the units that are going to help our youngsters in the future? So please, please, may I respectfully appeal to you today, do everything you can to switch to metric. You can go on the Dr. Metric website, you can go on the Dr. Metric Facebook page, where you'll find a lot more information about the sorts of things you can do to help this situation. Please, 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 let's do it for our children. Thank you.